Welcome to this short video on the use of simulation as a tool to support adult learners. During this video we will consider what motivates adult learners. We'll look at some of the theories that underpin adult learning. And finally, we will consider the theory behind simulation and learning by participation. The process of education is a complex series of interactions between two key components, the teacher and the learner. It would be easy to think that for education to be effective, all that is required is the delivery of teaching that is clear and of a high quality. But teaching is only one component of an educational encounter. If we have not considered how an individual learns best, what motivates them, or even what mood they are in, then we may not be able to provide optimal conditions for learning to take place. It may not be the first thing that springs to mind when we consider setting up learning opportunities, but are your learners comfortable is an important question to ask if we want them to be receptive to our teaching. If we begin with the bottom layer of Maslow's hierarchy, consider the space we are working in. How is the ambient temperature? If the room is too hot or too cold, will your learners be able to maintain their concentration? Have we figured in regular breaks for comfort, food and water? If we consider the question, what motivates us to learn, then the goals that motivate each of us to undertake learning are both varied and individual. Lieb offered a possible list of learner motivations, but this list may not be exhaustive. Some may be overt from the very nature of the training interaction, but some may require time and effort to explore with our learners. When we are setting up medical simulations, we need to consider our options. How will we represent our case? Will we use a mannequin? If so, will it be of high or low fidelity? Will we use a human participant in the form of a simulated patient? Where would we like to conduct the teaching? Will we use a simulation centre or will we take the simulation in situ? Each of these choices has pros and cons to recommend them. The best results will come when our choices are informed by a clear vision of the learning outcome that we seek to achieve. Simulation as an educational strategy sits as a bridge within the zone of proximal development. This concept was introduced by the psychologist Lev Vygotsky. It was seen as a way to describe the way a child follows adult example and gradually develops the ability to do certain tasks without help. The zone of proximal development sits between what a learner can do without help and what they can't do. It's an area of learning that occurs when a person requires the assistance of a facilitator with a higher skill set. The role of simulation education is to give the learner experiences within their zone of proximal development and thereby encourages their individual development until the teacher is no longer needed for that task. The use of simulation as a teaching modality is informed by two schools of educational theory. Constructivism, which seeks to build new learning on the base of the learner's existing knowledge. It acknowledges the effect of the mind and the mental processes on learning. Behaviorism, which relies on observable behaviours and as an individual response to a stimulus. Through positive and negative reinforcement, learning can come from operant conditioning. Simulation allows the repetition of an event to increase knowledge acquisition and automated response formation. Simulation in the form of basic life support training regularly teaches students how to deal with a cardiac arrest by repeatedly practicing scenarios. If a student performs well, then they will pass the course criteria and they are rewarded with a certificate of competence. This follows the behaviourist theory in the fact that behaviours which are rewarded are repeated. This was noted by Skinner right back in 1938. In constructivism, an important aspect of guiding development is an understanding of the existing knowledge of your candidates. This will form the base on which we build new learning. So first, you should ascertain and activate prior knowledge. Get your candidates to explain what they know, show what they can do so far. Then, you can encourage them to build on and challenge their existing knowledge, but don't tell them what they already know. Make an effort to stress the clinical context and the situation. Explore, why am I doing it? What could go wrong? Try to use a variety of active learning techniques to engage your learners. Get them to read, to discuss and to problem solve. And finally, give your learners responsibility for their own learning. Don't be afraid to give them homework. Simulation is an experiential learning tool. 
If we map Kolb's cycle onto the simulation experience, then the scenario forms a concrete experience for the candidates. The debrief will then allow them to reflect deeply on the experience and to precipitate greater understanding. The potential for behavioural change through abstract conceptualisation. In subsequent scenarios, the candidates will actively experiment with their new knowledge and so the cycle rolls on. Experiential learning is not a new thing. In ancient Greece, Sophocles stated, one must learn by doing the thing, for though you think you know it, you have no certainty until you try. We have explored the idea that what we hope to teach does not always equate with what our candidates learn, but we should perhaps spare a thought for the potential learning of lessons that we had not intended, what might be described as hidden teaching. Your candidates are like sponges, soaking up experiences, and they will learn when you least expect it. This may be in the form of the transmission of norms and values. Behaviours may be observed and emulated, whether those behaviours are intended or not. In this short presentation, we have considered what motivates adult learners and some of the theory behind adult learning. We have looked at the theory behind simulation and learning by participation. Thank you for your time and your attention.